as a geography professor, I'm very concerned with how students think about global issues, how they organize spaces, and categorize these places around the world. One thing that for me that has been critical is that we try and put this information into a greater context so that they can synthesize their, their learning so it will be more usable and also more useful. As information has become increasingly accessible, educators must focus on the skills that we need to have students be able to contextualize their, their information. One of the keys to being able to do this is to develop a malleable as well as an expandable worldview. One of the things that I've always thought about was how my worldview and how it changes is that things are going to be continually going under massive shifts. One of them is that, you know, I grew up in the Cold War, went to elementary school during the Cold War, and the world's different now. A lot of the things that I based my information on then are no longer true. But it's not just that those facts aren't true, it's that how we put those information pieces together, that's also no longer true. Consequently, the world that I, the framework that I had for understanding the world needed, being up, needed to be updated. The World Bank has recently eliminated the term developing country from its lexicon. But many people still think about the world as primarily places of third world countries. Now, this uses a vocabulary that's very outdated in terms of geopolitical references, but worse, it also has a way of shaping global places and looking at how we think about things in global developmental patterns in a very negative way that is decades out of date, and frankly, probably even generations out of date. What we need is to have a more accurate worldview on how we think about these places. A worldview. As I'm going to look at it, a worldview is the perspectives that we use to frame how we think about information and how we synthesize global context. A worldview is going to inform every piece of information that we know, and on gaps in our knowledge, a worldview is going to be what we use to fill in the blanks and assume things about the world. So if our assumptions are wrong, more often than not, it's because our worldview might be off. How important is a worldview? It's incredibly important because a faulty worldview can be its own cognitive bias. Hans Rosling, pictured here, is a TED legend. He's given some fantastic talks, and he's polled people for years, giving them questions about basic global statistics. It's not going to be too, as a geography professor, I'm not shocked that a lot of what his research has shown is that people don't know the basic facts about the world. But it's not just that they don't know the basic facts about the world. The problem is, is that we're systematically wrong. I give this same quiz to my students, and they fail miserably. But I don't get disappointed or discouraged about that because they're in good company. Nobel Prize laureates, journalists, policymakers, politicians, they also fail this quiz miserably. It's not just because they're wrong, they're systematically wrong. If they're given three options, they get less than 33% right. Why? Because their faulty worldview leads them to negatively perceive the world as worse than it actually is. So what is this overly dramatic worldview that I'm discussing, right? An overly dramatic worldview is going to see what it fears the most. It'll blow things out of proportion, it'll rush to judgment, overgeneralize, it'll see things as either black or white. And it will fail to realize that even incremental steps in the right direction is still tremendous progress. An overly dramatic worldview, it's going to undo educational efforts because what happens with an overly dramatic worldview is we fail to put into context the knowledge that we're actually receiving about the world and not when we fail to have that proper context we're not going to see things as they actually are. We should have hope in a better world. Not a hope based on positive thinking or a cheery disposition, but from a critical analysis of the available facts and framed in a proper context. There are many things that we need to do to be able to get there. And some of the books that have framed my thinking 
towards this are listed here. Now, obviously, I can't agree with everything that every one of these authors says in each of these books. The world isn't getting better everywhere in every single way and in all places. But overall, the general trend is many things have, there have been great progress made throughout the world. That fact is unassailable. And yet, you can miss this most obvious of all facts if you have a faulty worldview, if you have a negative perspective of, and that filters all the information that you receive. So the question that I end up having for educators is thinking about this. How do we get a more factful worldview? How do we teach our students, first of all, how do we as educators receive our own more accurate worldview? And how do we teach our students to develop a more accurate worldview? I think there are many things that education can do to address this type of situation, and how we put this into place will be very important. The first thing we need to do is always refresh our content. My father was a high school math teacher. Two plus two is still four. That's not going to change. But Russia's relationship with its Slavic neighbors, that has continued to change and will evolve in the future. Peru, displayed here, its geographic context was once that of a far-flung colonial outpost in the New World. Now it's pretty much very centered towards the Pacific Rim and has deep connections with East Asia. Peru's geographic context has shifted from an Atlantic on the periphery of an Atlantic-centered region to now a major cog in a Pacific-centered region. That geographic pivot completely changes the interactions that Peru has and its relationship with its neighbors and the regionalization in which we should think about Peru. But do we consider Peru any differently? Do we consider the Pacific networks and the Atlantic networks any differently with this information? When we receive this new information, how does it update all the other things that we know about Peru or the Atlantic or the Pacific? When we get a new worldview, it's going to be expanded and enriched by the other bits of information that are there. Second, we have to diversify our information streams. If you only read the news from those, that, those you follow on social media, you're going, not going to see the world as it is, but as filtered through those that you follow on social media. We also need to learn about the news in a different way. 2013. My students had no interest in learning that night about Chechnya and Kyrgyzstan. 2013, just the week before the Boston Marathon. Then the bombings happened in Boston. And Chechnya, Dagestan, and Kyrgyzstan were on the lips of news reporters and my students like never before. They all had questions. Hey, you were talking last week about this. What, tell us more. Let's learn about places before something horrific happens. Let's learn about places for their own sake. And let's learn about places before something like this happens because then we're not going to be playing catch up where the news is the one giving us our historical and our geographic context to understand current events. It's going to be critical for us to be able to expand our worldview to know about places before things happen. The Vietnam War is often the only time we reference Southeast Asia in United States classes, classrooms. But they don't call it the Vietnam War back there. They refer to it as the American War for incredibly obvious reasons. But it should also be incredibly obvious why we in the United States refer to it as the Vietnam War. And it's okay that this same reference plate, historical events have different reference points in different places because that's a part of different worldviews. I think an incredibly important part of developing a worldview is being able to acknowledge that other reference points and other worldviews can also be valid. This doesn't mean you have to adopt other worldviews constantly, but if we're going to make sense of the world, we have to understand other worldviews to see how other people put things into place. Otherwise, the world is just going to be incomprehensible. We have to ground our opinions in facts. I don't mind people being ignorant, because frankly, I'm ignorant about a good many things. My education hasn't taken me to explore every single topic in the world. 
I also don't mind people being very passionate about their opinions because passion is what's going to really change, drive a lot of the changes that this world absolutely needs. But what I do end up minding is when people are passionately opinionated about topics that they're willfully ignorant about. <laughs> that is something that we certainly see. It may have been true, yes, that we're going to have well-informed people still have disagreements. And I think it's important to recognize that multiple worldviews make for a healthy intellectual ecosystem. It leads towards sharpening blade against blade to be intellectually vigorous so that it's not just one random thought. But we do need to do our homework. We need to make sure that we aren't relying on our worldview to cover gaps in our knowledge, that we actually do our homework and do our research. It may have, you know, our ancestors may have been served very well having a primitive and instinctual fear of sharks. But do we let that govern our choices, our laws, our demonstration, when clearly mosquitoes are the much more deadly species? We need to ground our actions and our policies and our laws on the best available facts. When we change our minds, it's incredibly important for us how we're going to be able to mentally mature on those things. And I think we need to not be afraid of accepting new pieces of information. This is going to be, in many ways, the I saved this for last, partly because I think it's the most important thing that we need to do, to not be afraid to change our minds. But it's also, I would say, the hardest and the most difficult thing that it's going to be for us to implement in terms of getting a more accurate and expanded worldview. When we have to accept new pieces of information, more often than not, we're going to have to reorder other parts of our, the things that we know. And that can be incredibly difficult, because as we reorder one piece of information, that might mean we have to change the worldview in how we look at it. And that means maybe we see how we think as an integral part of who we are. In other words, changing our mind is difficult. It's hard. I'm not saying that the world is perfect. I'm not saying that everything about the world and how we, it's structured is going to be good. But so many things, maternal mortality rates, literacy rates, these things have been improving. And the human condition has gotten better and every single year we can see great progress. But do we see that progress if we also focus on, if we put it into a, a faulty, cog cognitively biased worldview. We have to start seeing the world as it is. We have to start being able to put that information into a way that puts everything into its proper context. The challenges that confront this world are serious. While the human condition might be getting better, there are some things that have certainly steadily gotten worse. The challenges that will confront this next generation will be much more difficult, much more complex than previous problems. We need to equip students not just with more access to information. We need to equip them with the tools to filter out the noise from the signal. We need to give them the tools to be able to assess the reliability and the validity of that signal. One of the things that we need more than anything is to be able to give our students an accurate worldview when we teach a bit about concepts, to let them, any one bit of information that we teach them, it's not going to be enough because what they're going to need to do is not just teach one given fact, but give them the tools to integrate that fact into all the other pieces of information that they know. When we do this, we can give our students an education that will expand and refine their worldviews. Now that's an education worth working for. Thank you very much.